All right, so this is our Word document with a single table inside of it. And I'll be demonstrating how to manipulate that table using uh, Python docx. So I have the document right here inside of the same folder with my uh, git table script. So I don't have uh, Python docx installed yet, so I'll just install it with pip install python dash docx should run pretty quickly now it should be rebuilding and we can see the red squigglies went away so that's a good sign all right so i have my document object created and i'm just using the document class from python docx i can uh, print all the tables inside of it in a list by doing that we only have our one table here so I can do this, I can say for tables in document dot tables. And I can say print tables. This should give us the same output, which it does. And then I can take that further and say for rows in tables dot rows and we can print that that will give us the individual row objects so if we print that we can see we have five row objects one two three four five that checks out and then we can take that further and print the cells so for cells in rows dot cells print cells so if we run that it'll print each individual cell and we can make that a little more readable by getting the text inside of each individual cell so we can see that even though this is one long merged cell it is uh, it'll be thought of as five individual cells with the same value and then we can see each of our rows our A row, B row, C row, and D row. All right, so we have our Word document here, and we're getting the tables inside of it here. So we run that, and it returns a list of all our tables. We want the first and only entry in that list. So we do that. Uh, we'll save that to a variable called table. And I'll just copy and paste. And then we want to add a row to that. So we say add row. So I can run that. And if I close this, then I'll open that docx back up. You can see it didn't do anything. It's the same exact file. And that is because we didn't save it. So uh, after we add the row, we need to say, uh, let's see, document. document dot save and then we will pass in whatever we want the name of the file to be I'm going to name this edited table edited so if I run it this time and then I go back to my folder we have this and we can see we've added a new row here all right, so we've added an empty row to our document here, which is cool, but not very useful. So what we can do is say table uh, dot rows and negative one. And if I print that, it will be the last uh, element in our array of tables and uh, of rows on the, um, on the table. So it'll always be the last uh, row. So uh, I'll print that. That just returns a row object. And what we can do once we have that is we can loop through it. So for the cells in, I'll just copy this, control C, control V, dot cells. And we will change the cell text. We'll say cells dot text 
equals, and we'll just make it say hello. So if I run that, and I'll close this back, and I'll open it again, we can see that now we have filled that uh, those columns there. So we can use this to add rows dynamically. So I could say for I in range, uh, let's go 10, we'll just add 10 rows and then we'll tab these over. And we also have to take where we add our row and do that right there. So if I run that and then I exit and open it back up, you can see we have 10. So now we know how to add to the end of the row, but we also want to uh, maybe insert um, a row underneath a certain column. So for me, I want to insert a row underneath the Ds. And the API that we're working with uh, for docx doesn't really have a great way to do that so we have to um, play around with the xml the underlying xml elements from the word document and i'll show you how to do that it's really not as bad as it sounds first we need to say we need to declare an insertion row so we'll have our insertion row and this will be the one we'll be adding underneath so that will equal uh, I want the D's, so we're going to say, let's see, table dot rows, and I think that should be the fourth, uh, zero, one, two, three, four. Yeah, that should be the fourth. And then we want the underlying uh, XML element. So for that, we just attach a dot uh, underscore tr and that is the tr uh, table row element so then once we have that we can say insertion row dot add next and then we have to specify what we want to add here so i'm going to get rid of the top of this for loop and we'll bring these back because we're still going to be adding rows to the end of our table. We'll use this table add row that will add a new row down here. And then we'll define the value while it's still down there. And then we will take whatever is at this position. So we'll copy this and we'll plug it in here. And then we'll add the dot tr to get the underlying XML element. So we'll be creating the new row down here, and then when we get to this line, we'll be taking it and placing it underneath our fourth line. So let's go ahead and run that. And oh, uh, let me change the value. Um, that way we can actually tell something happened. We'll just say that, we'll run that again. I'll close this. And then we'll open up our edited file and we can see that now we have an inserted row right there.